My name is Dr. Elizabeth Kaufman, and I'm a cardiac electrophysiologist at Metro Health Medical Center. I teach at Case Western Reserve University. I've been asked to give a talk on AV block. To think about AV block, we divide this into different levels of AV block, starting with first degree AV block. First degree AV block is a situation where you have the same number of P waves as QRS. So there's a one-to-one -one relationship. The AV relationship is one-to-one. -one. But the PR interval is long. Usually first degree AV block results from delay in the AV node. Consequently, the QRS complex is usually normal and narrow because first degree AV block does not imply that there has to be any disease of the Hisperkinji system. The other kind of AV block that's simple to talk about is third degree AV block. And that means there are more P waves than QRS and there is no relationship between the P waves and the QRS complexes. So the P waves come along on their own rhythm and the QRSs, which are much slower co to come along, are regular and not related to the P waves. I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Third degree heart block, also called complete heart block, can occur due to block in the AV node or due to block in the Hisperkinji tissue. For example, a patient who has a left bundle branch block and develops block in the right bundle. Where the block occurs determines where the escape rhythm can come from. In the case of a patient who has block at the level of the AV node, the escape rhythm generally comes from the junction, from the low AV nodal region here. And usually that escape rhythm has a rate between 40 and 60 beats per minute. And because there's no Hisperkinji disease, the escape rhythm is generally narrow complex. In contrast, your patient who has block at the level of the Hisperkinji tissue has an escape rhythm that comes from the ventricle where the rate may be 20 to 40 beats per minute, very slow. And because this is arising from the ventricular myocardium and not conducting through the specialized conduction system, the QRS complexes are wide. So complete heart block with a wide complex escape rhythm, a rate between 20 and 40 beats per minute, is likely due to block at the level of the Hisperkinji tissue. If you see a narrow complex escape rhythm at 40 to 60 beats per minute, you can deduce that the level of block was at the level of the AV node. Finally, I'm going to talk about the various types of second-degree AV block. And in second-degree AV block, there are more P waves than QRSs, but there is a relationship between the P waves and the QRSs. That is to say, some of the P waves conduct. So in first-degree AV block, all of the P waves conduct. In third degree AV block, none of the P waves conduct. In second degree AV block, some of the P waves conduct. The first type we talk about is called Mobitz 1 second degree AV block, and that is also called AV Wenckebach. Mobitz 1 block occurs at the level of the AV node. Therefore, it is usually associated with narrow QRS complexes. And Mobitz 1 block is known for its progressive PR prolongation 
until finally one of the P waves doesn't conduct and then the whole cycle starts over again. The relationship of P waves to QRS in Mobitz 1 block is variable. You can have 5 P waves to 4 QRS, you can have 4 to 3, 3 to 2, or even 2 to 1. When the ratio is 2 to 1, then we have 2 to 1 block. Again, when it happens to be at the level of the AV node, 2 to 1 AV block generally is associated with a narrow complex QRS. Mobitz 2 block is associated with disease in the Hisperkinji system again. Mobitz 2 block usually results in 2 to 1 AV block. When you see 2 to 1 AV block with a wide complex QRS, you can usually deduce that it is Mobitz 2. When you see 2 to 1 block with a narrow QRS, you can generally deduce that it's Mobitz 1. And the other clue that you're dealing with Mobitz 1 block is if your 2 to 1 block keeps company with typical classic Wenckebach block that shows progressive PR prolongation when the periodicity is greater than 2 to 1. For example, 3 to 2. I'll show an example of this. This slide is an example of first degree AV block. I want to focus on this lead across the bottom here, which shows a P wave followed by a QRS, another P wave followed by a QRS, and so forth. You can see that for every P wave there's a QRS. However, the PR interval is a little bit long. So this is an example of first degree AV block. Here is an example of third degree heart block, complete heart block. I want to draw your attention to the P waves, which are sometimes hidden. That one's hidden right by a QRS. P waves, P waves. There are more P waves than QRSs, and there is no consistent relationship between the P waves and the QRSs. Also notice that the QRS rhythm is regular, narrow, and with a heart rate between 40 and 60 beats per minute. So this is an example of complete heart block at the level of the AV node with a junctional escape rhythm. This patient is likely fairly stable. We usually don't worry too much about heart block at the level of the AV node, partly because a junctional rhythm at 40 to 60 beats per minute is enough to keep you going reasonably well. And also, because the AV node is quite sensitive to manipulation with drugs. So for example, when you have a patient with block at the level of the junction and you want to jazz up their heart rate a little, they'll often respond to vagolytics like atropine or to catecholamines, uh, epinephrine, isoproterenol, dopamine, dobutamine, things like that will make them go faster. In contrast, the electrocardiogram I show here shows you third degree heart block, which let's just look at these P waves again. Here's one, here's one, here's one. There's quite a few of them. In fact, there's underlying sinus tachycardia because the body wants the heart rate to be a little faster, so it's telling the sinus node to go faster. Sinus node is going faster, but unfortunately, none of the P waves are conducting. You see that the escape rhythm, the ventricular escape rhythm, is a wide complex rhythm. It's very regular, and it is at a heart rate between 20 and 40 beats per minute. So here's an example of heart block with Hisperkinji disease, and this, in contrast to the one I showed before, this one would not be expected to respond to pharmacologic 
efforts. So the ventricular escape rhythm is not likely to get better when you give atropine or catecholamines. One thing you do not want to give here is a medicine such as lidocaine, which will often blot out any ventricular escape rhythm you might be seeing. We actually think about this when we are implanting the pacemaker because we don't want to give an excessive amount of local anesthetic before we have a catheter in the ventricle where we can pace. Because the last thing we want to do is convert a somewhat stable rhythm like this into uh, a rhythm with no QRSs at all. Now we're moving back to second degree AV block and as you can see this is an example of second degree AV block characterized by more P waves than QRSs. This P wave conducts, this P wave conducts with a longer PR interval and this one blocks. And that pattern is repeated over and over again. So there are more P waves than QRSs. And in this case, this would be an example of 3 to 2 conduction. Uh, if I look a little farther along here, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 P waves, an example of 4 to 3 AV conduction. So this, of course, is Mobitz 1, or Wankybach, second degree AV block. And this is all going on at the level of the AV node. As is the case with first degree AV block, Mobitz 1 second degree AV block can occur in healthy normal people and frequently does occur during sleep or rest. Now this slide shows another example of second degree AV block. In this case there are twice as many P waves as QRSs. This is 2 to 1, and do we think it's at the level of the AV node or the Hisperkinji tissue? Well, we have to look at the QRS complexes, and they are wide, and that tells us that this is very likely Mobitz 2 AV block. Finally, I wanted to show an example of second degree AV block at the level of the AV node that gives an example of both 3 to 2 conduction. As you see, this P wave conducts, this one conducts with a longer PR interval, and this one blocks. And then thereafter, you see P waves that conduct with 2 to 1 block. So this is an example of 2 to 1 block with a narrow QRS keeping company with 3 to 2 periodicity and you know without any question that this is an example of Mobitz 1 AV block even though you see 2 to 1 conduction here.